ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम चैप्टर कैंटो थ्री चैप्टर फिफ्टीन टेक्स नंबर तद्विश्वुर्वधिकृतम भुवनकंद्यम दिव्यम विचित्र विबुधाग्र विमशोचि आपु परा मुदम पूर्वेत्योगा माया बलेन मुनयस्तथो विकुंठम ट्रांसलेशन एंड पर्पोर्ट बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपा दस द ग्रेट सेजेस सनका सनातना सनंदना एंड सनत कुमारा Upon reaching the above mentioned Vaikuntha in the spiritual world by dint of their mystic yoga performance perceived unprecedented happiness they found that the spiritual sky was illuminated by highly decorated airplanes piloted by the best devotees of Vaikuntha and was predominated by the supreme personality of godhead purport by shila prabhu pa the supreme personality of godhead is one without a second he is above everyone no one is equal to him nor is any one greater than him therefore he is described here as vishwa guru He is the prime living entity of the entire material and spiritual creation and is Bhuvanaika Vandyam the only worshipable personality in the three worlds The airplanes in the spiritual sky are self illuminated and are pilot piloted by great devotees of the Lord In other words in the Vaikuntha planets there is no scarcity of the things which are available in the material world they are available but they are more valuable because they are spiritual and therefore eternal and blissful the sages felt an unprecedented happiness because vaikuntha was not predominated by an ordinary man the vaikuntha planets are predominated by expansions of krishna who are differently named as madhusudana Madhava, Narayana, Pradyumna, etc. These transcendental planets <clears throat> are worshipable because the personality of Godhead personally rules them. It is said here that the sages reach the transcendental spiritual sky by dint of their mystic power. That is the perfection of the yoga system. The breathing exercises. <clears throat> and disciplines to keep health in proper order are not the ultimate goals of yoga perfection the yoga system as generally understood is ashtanga yoga or siddhi eightfold perfection in yoga by dint of perfection in yoga one can become lighter than the lightest and heavier than the heavy, heaviest one can go wherever he likes and he can achieve opulences as he likes there are eight such perfections the rishis the four kumaras reached vaikuntha by becoming lighter than the lightest and thus passing over the space of the material world modern mechanical space vehicles are unsuccessful because they cannot go to the highest region of this material creation and they certainly cannot enter the spiritual sky but by perfection of the yoga system one not only can travel through material space but can surpass material space and enter the spiritual sky 
we learn this fact also from an incident concerning Durvasa Muni and Maharaj Ambarisha. It is understood that in one year Durvasa Muni travelled everywhere and went into the spiritual sky to meet the Supreme Personality of Godhead Narayana. By present standards, scientists calculate that if one could travel at the speed of light, it would take 40,000 years to reach the highest planet of this material world. But the yoga system can carry one without limitation or difficulty. The word yoga maya is used in this verse. Yoga maya balena vikuntam. The transcendental happiness exhibited in the spiritual world and all other spiritual manifestations there are made possible by the influence of yoga maya the internal potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus sends the Bhakti Vedanta purport. So we are reading in this part of the Bhagavatam, Lord Brahma describing the visit of the four Kumaras to Vaikuntha and we are reading about the situation in Vaikuntha. Continuing that, Lord Brahma is saying in this verse today, Tat Vishwa Guru Adhikritam Bhuvanaika Vandyam. <clears throat> that Vaikuntha is Vishwa Guru Adhikritam Bhuvanaika Vandyam Adhikritam. Adhikritam meaning predominated by. Controlled by. Controlled by whom? Vishwaguru, the spiritual master of the entire universe that refers to Krishna. <clears throat> Bhuvanaika Vandyam, and that Lord who is worshipable, Vandyam, uh, among all the different planetary systems or by the residents of all planetary systems. He alone is the worshipable personality in the three worlds. And Divyam and that spiritual world is transcendental, Divyam. Vichitra meaning highly decorated, beautiful, wonderful. Divyam Vichitra. Vibudhagriya Vimana Shochihi. Vibudhagriya we will discuss this more. Vibhudhagriya referred to the devotees and Vimana Shochihi and these devotees riding in the Vimana uh, and Shochihi, Shochihi illuminated, glowing. So the spiritual sky was illuminated by these very highly decorated Vichitra Vimana decorated vimana all of which is divyam apuhu param mudham apurvam upethya yoga maya balena and yoga maya balena munayaha upethya by the spiritual strength yoga maya balena munayaha the munis that's referring to the four kumaras Munayaha Upetya, they attained, they went to the spiritual kingdom, Vaikuntha, and they experienced Param Mudam. Mudam is happiness, bliss. So Param Mudam, ap Apurvam Param Mudam, experienced unprecedented and spiritual happiness, Apuhu. They experienced Tadatho Vikuntam and that spiritual world which is predominated by Vikuntha Vishnu. <clears throat> so, thus the great sages Sanaka Sanatana Sanandana Sanat Kumara Munayaha upon reaching the above Vaikuntha in the spiritual world Upethya. By dint of their mystic yoga performance, yoga maya balena, perceived unprecedented happiness, 
apuhu param mudam apurvam mudam they found that the spiritual sky was illuminated by highly decorated airplanes divyam vichitra vimana shochihi piloted by the best devotees of vaikuntha vibhudhagrya and was predominated by the supreme personality of godhead vishwagurum adhikrutham <coughs> so here very wonderful description of the uh, experience that the sages went through and uh, so there are many wonderful descriptions and the uh, attributes of the lord the lord is described as vishwa guru he is the spiritual master of the entire universe of the entire creation all spiritual knowledge is ultimately coming from him he is known as the adi guru the original spiritual master because knowledge like we understand it is in a we follow a descending process we receive knowledge from the spiritual master the spiritual master receives the knowledge from his spiritual master and this goes on and so where does it all begin it begins from krishna <clears throat> so the supreme lord is vishwa guru he is the one who gives all of this knowledge then why do we say the spiritual master gives us the knowledge here it is said krishna is the vishwa guru but we also say the spiritual master gives the knowledge so who is giving the knowledge the spiritual master is giving the knowledge or krishna is giving the knowledge so this is explained very nicely in chaitanya charitamrita गुरु कृष्ण रूप हन शास्त्रेर प्रमाणे गुरु रूपे कृष्ण कृपा करेण भक्त गणे गुरु कृष्ण रूप गुरु इज एक्चुअली कृष्ण रूप इन अदर वर्ड्स द स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर इज एक्चुअली ए फॉर्म ऑफ कृष्ण और इज नॉन डिफरेंट फ्रॉम कृष्ण गुरु कृष्ण रूप हन शास्त्रेर प्रमाणे this is the verdict of all the shastras guru rupe krishna krupa karena bhakta gane guru rupe in the form of the guru krishna gives this his mercy prabhupa translates in the form of the spiritual master krishna delivers the living entity so it is krishna who is delivering but how does he deliver in the form of the spiritual master so that is the role the spiritual master plays and hence the spiritual master is guru krishna roopa guru krishna roopa hane shastre ra pramane so the spiritual master should be respected as good as krishna now this is a very strong principle in the gaudiya vaishnava philosophy <clears throat> uh we sing sakshat haritvena samasta shastraihi uktastata bhavyata eva sadbihi and so on so where does this principle originally come from it comes from the bhagavatam in the 11th canto when krishna was describing prabhupad quotes this verse many times in the uh, in his purports lord krishna explains acharyam maam vijaniyan nava manyet karhichit acharyam maam vijaniyan you should consider the acharya maam vijaniyan as good as me nava manyet karhichit na 
अवमन्येथा ही शुड नेवर बी डिसरेस्पेक्टेड मन्येथा मींस टू रेस्पेक्ट अवमन्येथा मींस टू डिसरेस्पेक्ट नाव मन्येथ कर ही चित at any time in any instance the spiritual master should not be disrespected namarthya buddhya we also say the spiritual master should not be considered as an ordinary human being where does that come from namarthya buddhya marthya buddhi means marthya means an ordinary mortal of this world a person who comes and goes like all of us we come and go after some time so we are called martya we come and we die after some time so the spiritual master martya buddhya means to consider him as an ordinary mortal na martya buddhya sarva deva mayo guru hu the spiritual master sarva deva mayo guru hu the spiritual master is a uh, is a representative of all the devatas all godly personalities he represents so and hence he is to be considered in a very special position and here chaitanya charitamrita also says the same thing guru krishna guru krishna roopahana guru roope krishna krupa karena bhakta gane so this is how this principle is so strongly taught in chaitanya charitamrita in chaitanya mahaprabhu's tradition and that is how the spiritual master is actually a representative of krishna who is the vishwa guru yes krishna is the vishwa guru <clears throat> but how does he work how does he act how does krishna act krishna's specific act of giving transcendental knowledge and delivering the living entities from the material world how does krishna do that guru guru roope in the form of the spiritual master he does that that is why the spiritual master's position is very special in order to teach us this important position in the program that shila prabhupad gave to all of us in iskon the first thing that we do in the morning during mangala arati we come and sing guru ashtaka so that we remember we recognize what is the position of the spiritual master and we although the arati is going for the going on for the deities we are singing about the guru and we are rela- relating what is what are all the different attributes of the spiritual master what are all the symptoms of a spiritual master and how all of them are related to chaitanya mahaprabhu to krishna to the vigrahas to the prasadam and to the eternal leela of radha and krishna and the position of the spiritual master and how important it is to please the spiritual master because when the spiritual master is pleased krishna is pleased so this very wonderful way to begin our life was planned by shila prabhupad and that's how we begin our day remembering spiritual master as a representative of krishna <clears throat> so that tad vishwa guru adhikrutam the swaikunta is adhikrutam predominated by controlled by by whom by vishwa guru adhikrutam and that vishwa guru who is bhuvanaika vandyam he is the most worshipable personality in the entire universe in all the three worlds that is because like say for instance <clears throat> i have borrowed crores of rupees from my uncle and i am leading i am by myself a very poor man but i have borrowed lot of money and i am leading a very rich life and then somebody may come and say oh you are such a rich man and i will also say yes i am a very rich man but the truth is this money is not mine it's all my uncle's money any moment my uncle can take away right 
So to call me a rich man is not, is inappropriate. It's, you can call my uncle a rich man, that's more appropriate. In the same way, <clears throat> in the material world, there may be many personalities, including the devatas, human beings and even the devatas, who may manifest wonderful qualities and great opulences and all of that. But all of these wonderful qualities and opulences originally belong to Krishna. Everyone is borrowing from Krishna and manifesting for some time. Originally it belongs to Him. So none of us are actually the owners of these good qualities or any opulence that we possess. So the only person who deserves to be worshipped is Krishna. That is why Vishnu is glorified as Bhuvanaika Vandyam. That one personality, Eka, in the entire universe who deserves to be glorified because he is the one who possesses all wonderful qualities. And everyone who is manifesting any wonderful quality is actually borrowing from him. They don't know and those who are glorifying him also don't know. So it's just a, it's an interaction between a, two sets of ignorant people. One is saying, oh you are so glorious and the other person is thinking, yes I am so glorious. But actually all of it is belonging to Krishna. So that is the truth, Bhuvanaika Vandyam. And then we see here, Lord Brahma's depiction of the spiritual world. It is a, it is a, it's not some kind of a dull world. What Bhagavatam is promising that where we will head to if we practice the principles of the Bhagavatam, it's not a dull uh, part of the uh, dull universe. It's a most wonderful, resplendent universe. See the adjectives that Brahma is using. Divyam vichitram vibudhagra vimana shochi. Shochi means glowing. And divyam means transcendental. Vichitra means decorated, beautiful, attractive. That's the kind of a spiritual world. Divyam vichitra vibudhagra vimana shochi. That spiritual world which is brilliant, transcendental and where there are glowing, decorated vimanas piloted by whom? Vibhudhagra Vimana Shochi. This Vibhudha Agriya is another very excellent word and very nicely Prabhupada has translated and explained in the, uh, in the verse. Buddha means enlightened. That's how we know that there is the Buddha. And then Buddha came, went to a, a certain place and he was enlightened under a tree. And once he was enlightened under the, under the Bodhi tree, he became enlightened, he became Buddha. Right? That's how. The word Buddha comes from the same word. Buddha means enlightened. So Vibhudha, Vibhudha means Visheshataha Buddha. Very, very specially enlightened. So, generally the materialistic people who are under the material bodily conception of life, they are described as not Buddha, they are ignorant people. So, uh, those who are enlightened, they are called Vibuddha. And among the enlightened people, Agra, Agra means foremost. So, these are Vibuddha and among them the foremost. The foremost among the learned people. That's why Prabhupada says, Vibhuda Agriya, of the devotees who are the best of the learned. So, this is not an exaggeration. Let us see what Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita about Buddha or Vibhuda. Krishna says, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Matha Sarvam Pravartate Iti Matva Bhajan Temam Buddha Bhava Samanvitaha. Krishna is also using the word Buddha. Buddha, Krishna says, who are those? Those who know 
Aham Sarvasya Prabhava. Everything is coming from me. I am the source of everything. Mathas Sarvam Pravartate. And everything is an emanation from me. So in other words, those who know that everything is coming from Krishna. Now, this entire thing, this is an important principle. There is a source and things, we, and everything is coming from that source. This is an important understanding in Vedanta because any human being, any intelligent person, we all like to know where we came from. Right? And the first, our first quest, where we come from, happens at a very young age, and we like to know who our parents are. Right? And that's how we recognize our parents. Because we come from our parents. Just imagine somebody doesn't recognize the parents. If that person, something is wrong with that person. He does not even know father, mother. He doesn't care for the father and the mother. Hey, what kind of a person he is? We would say. So, important factor is to recognize the father and the mother. But then we understand father and mother, they are themselves coming from another source. They also had another father, mother. And their father and mother, that's our grandfather and grand, they also came from another source. So we want to know what is the ultimate source. And if there is an ultimate source, the next question we will ask is, what is that source of that ultimate source? If you ask that question, what is the source of the ultimate source, that means you have not understood what is the meaning of ultimate source. Ultimate source means that which is the ultimate source, which has no other source. If it has another source, then it is just a, another one more in the, in the line. So, Krishna is saying, that ultimate source is me. Aham sarvasya prabhavo mathas sarvam pravartate. So, that is why the Vedanta philosophy, understanding what is the ultimate source, is a very, very important aspect. Just like we have a relation with our parents. We all recognize that. You know, we have a relation with our father and mother and we have come from them and we have, a, we have an affectionate relationship. In the same way, with the ultimate source, also we have a relationship. And to discover that ultimate source, and the relationship with the ultimate source, and to know the plan of that ultimate source, why all of these emanations have come about, this is the highest understanding. There are many branches of knowledge. You may have biology, you may have science, you may have mathematics, and you may have engineering, you may have business, all of these different branches of knowledge may be there. But the ultimate knowledge is to know what is the source of everything? What is the purpose of this creation? Why did that source create this? Why did the emanation come from that source? And we are also part of that creation. Why we have all come? What is our relationship? What is the purpose? Understanding this is the highest knowledge. If we don't know this, and if we are studying so many other things, where is, where, where is the... What is the relative importance of these different knowledge when compared to why we are here? Just like for instance, somebody is taken in, there was a thief, he landed in the, the police nabbed him and they put him in the, put him in the prison, he is in the lockup in the police station. Now, the most important thing for a person in the lockup is, he should ask, why did I land here? Suppose in the lockup where there is, you know, just to keep them all busy, keep them entertained, they have put a television and he is lost in the television. Oh, nice program, next program, what is going to come? He is absorbed in that one. You know, whatever that little things that are there in the prison or in that enclosure, in that confinement, he's become excited about all those things, studying all those things and, ex, you know, absorbed in all of those things. We will say, hey, come on, all that, okay. 
But now think, why are you here? Why are you not outside? Why are you confined into this limited space? Actually in the same way we are limited in space and time. We want to live eternally. Our body has confined, our material creation has confined us. So recognizing this, understanding this is the most important thing and not realizing this is foolishness according to the Vedic perspective. We may have different kinds of knowledge of the, in this world, but if we don't know the ultimate situation, why we are here, why the creation exists, then we are lost. That is why Krishna says, this understanding, to come to this kind of a questioning and understanding, what is the source? I'll just take a few extra minutes. He is considered the highest knowledge and Krishna says, this won't happen so easily. Most people are caught up in the television and the window and the door and the floor and this and that of, the, of our world and studying all these things. Very rarely they understand, they want to know who is the source of everything. That's why Krishna says, Bahunam Janmanam Ante. After many, many year, lifetime of cultivation, Jnanavan Maam Prapadhyate. Vasudeva Sarvamithi. Samahatma Sudhurlaba, such a great person who understands this is very rare. That's why Vibhudha Agriya, the foremost among the learned are the devotees. So this is not an exaggeration, this is not just you know, we are all devotees and so we like to pat our own backs and we say that we are very good. No, it's not that there is a deep philosophical explanation. That's why Krishna says, Aham sarvasya prabhavo matha sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante maam buddha bhava samandita iti matva, those who know this, who have understood this, bhajante maam, they render service to me, buddha, and they are wise, vi buddha, they are wise, buddha bhava samandita ha, and how do they render service? Bhava samanvitaha, endowed with, filled with bhava, with love and emotions they serve. So, vibhudhagra vimana shochi. And, just last few points. And what is it like to go to the doorstep of Vaikuntha and experience? That here Brahma is saying, param apurvam mudham apuhu. What did they experience? They perceived unprecedented transcendental happiness. So, <clears throat> and how did they reach there? Yoga maya balena. Not by any material means. Yoga maya balena. So, we cannot make spiritual advancement by any material strength. It is by spiritual strength. And in this way, such an abode the, the devotees, the, the four sages attained and they felt unprecedented happiness at the doorstep of Vaikuntha. We'll stop here. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki.